Welcome back to a very rainy episode of uh, our eco zoo. Uh, we've just put in our Chinese pangolins here, and I think we're going to continue expanding. Oh, we've got damage barriers. We're going to continue expanding our zoo up this uh, this Asian way up here with all the Asian animals. So, oh, we've got a few things. First off, we've got some vet research complete. That's always good. Hey, we've got both of them. Okay, Axolotl and the Golden Poison Frog. I'm going to wait for them to get to full and then I'm going to change the exhibit so they're a little bit better and we'll move them on to research one of the other exhibit animals that we've got. That's great. And the lemur has had damaged barriers. Oh, goodness, yes. They definitely need the mechanic. I think they've already got the mechanic there. They're already on it, so we're okay. And the African wild dog also needs a mechanic. Um, perhaps this maintenance isn't enough. Let's have them come every six months and the same for the lemurs. Um, if, if ever we have issues, I'm just going to change it to be shorter maintenance period. And the water treatment probably also needs to be yeah, every six months. So that's fine. We'll request the mechanics for that too. Uh, I don't know how many mechanics we've got. I think we have three. Um, they seemed happy with their workload. But seeing as the zoo is making kind of a ridiculous amount of money, let's let's have a look. We're making a lot of money. I think maybe we can afford another mechanic to uh, come into the zoo. So let's let's have them and let's assign them to the same uh, work zone. We're gonna go for zoo, uh, which there you go. They can straight away start doing that. About to have a, a wild wa water buffalo baby, if I can speak. <laughs> We're about to have a wild water buffalo baby, so that's awesome. You gonna do it by the water? Look at them all in here, in the rain. Oh, we are in a tropical place though, so that is, it's bound to happen every so often. Bound to get some rain. I think that was the alpha male there that just charged past as if the others weren't there. Oh, oh, another little baby's come up. And here we go. Oh, the first steps into a rainy little habitat. I, th I was expecting them to shake off then, but <laughs> they're not dogs. They don't do that. Oh, look at them. They're so cute. Oh, and they've got their, they've got their dad here to come to check them out as well. Well, they're having a great time. Uh, we know about the damage barriers. I'm just going to get rid of these. Oh, we've got another, another damaged solar panel. Um, hopefully, we won't get too many of these because we've set most of them now to be maintenance every six months. Um, so for those we haven't, we'll... We'll request everyone and we'll set them to sort themselves out. But yes, I think that's fine. What we need is to get some, some animals for this episode. Oh my goodness, we're about to have a, a baby pygmy. I'm going to pause the game so we don't have our, our baby pygmy hippo. And then the habitat, the animal for this uh, episode, as you may have seen, is the red panda, which are oh, so adorable. Um, I don't know what group sizes they live in, actually. So let's have a quick look. Um, we're going into Zoopedia. We've got the red panda. They are endangered. Um, so they definitely qualify for this series. And it's one to two. So there's only two. Um, they're shy and guests can't enter the habitat. So that's fine. But to see about the barriers though, we need grade two climb proof. So we can use wood as long as we make it climb proof, which is perfect. Because I think they don't need a lot of space. Um, there's two. And even if there's like four babies, they only need 250 meters. So I think we'll just do a little one in here. Um, continue this path round. We make it seven meters. Have something like that. Um, it's got a little bit of a slope there, but it's not too bad. I think uh, accessibility wise, this isn't the best, but it has some route through that I think would probably be fine. <laughs> it's, it's, on, it's on the edge of what I consider fine, but I think it will be fine. So let's get the animals now. So as far as which panda we want, we've got a few on offer here. Um, there's some decent ones. We've got very expensive ones, but I don't think we need them for that good. I mean, 200 is kind of... I'm happy to spend 200. I'm not willing to spend 500. Oh, we definitely don't want that low fertility. That's a decent male. It's only 132. I think I'm going to go for this male. And then get another one of the cheaper females. They're not the best. Um, seeing as we primarily want them for fertility. Maybe this 200... Uh, one here. So we're going to get those two. We're going to collect them both and send them to quarantine, which is right near the start of our zoo over here. So now they can go to quarantine. I'm going to click play again. Let's check out our baby hippo. And then when we check them for diseases and everything, hopefully they'll have a nice new habitat uh, to be released into. 
Look at them. They're so weird, aren't they? They're like little bristles. And they're crazy big teeth. My goodness. Oh, the baby's on the way. Everyone here is watching. Got a whole talk at the same time. Oh, there we go. There's a little baby. Oh. The pygmy hippo babies are so weird. I do love them. <laughs> Gonna walk through the plant, just trot around. Look at them. Oh. Very, 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 very cute. And we've got a whole talk taking place soon. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick go through and make sure that all these solar panels and wash treatments are okay. And then the next thing I wanted to do, I know a number of you uh, were giving me some really helpful tips about the zoo tours. Um, this tour here, which I would like to rename to be the, uh, let's call it European and Exhibits. Um, this tour, I think we could maybe make it for four dollars but what we need to do is we need to add a few things to it we can view the tour rating currently it's terrible so perhaps it should be a little bit cheaper um but we haven't done a few things so we need to select some we need to add some more points to it that are going to give like uh like here that are going to give bonuses so that like guests can go to the toilet they can get some food and stuff make it a bit more of an enjoyable tour overall so i'm just going to add some tour points in and they are in facilities Oh goodness, where are they? I think they're near the bottom. Here they go, tour point. Um, we could, we've got them gonna, they're gonna start here basically. Then they're gonna come, have a look at the otters and they can come around. We could have them come here and just have a look at a bit of nature. That might be nice. Um, yeah, in fact, I'm gonna add one in here and then I'm gonna have them quickly come in and stop for some food. So maybe they should come here and they can have some food and then come back out, go to the tapers. We don't have any food or drink here. We could add a little bit of food and drink or maybe just a toilet in here because we've got a toilet there. I think maybe we should add another toilet over here so that guests have somewhere to go um, on this side of the zoo um, or a little bit further this way. And we can add that as a little stop on the tour. So let's put a little tour stop outside. In fact, I can make that much easier just by searching for tour. <laughs> uh, let's put it here. And then they're going to finish the tour and uh, finish up at here, I think. And I'm kind of happy with that. Let me know if I'm not doing, if there's like a more optimal way to do it. Okay, so now we need to add the tour point into the tour. So if we select the points, I'm going to click on this one here, which is for number 14. And then we're just going to move that up too, because we've got two more points before the end. This is the end uh, the tour end which doesn't appear on this list um so then we've got uh, 14 so i'm going to come here which is number five and then come down here and then go back in here see these two animals and then they're going to end just outside and then we need to add in these two uh, points over here so i'm going to select this one which is number 12 and we want that to be second because tour point number 10 very confusingly in this order number 10 is the otter's habitat which is the first one we go on so they start they go to the otter habitat they come around to this one, which is number 12, and then we're gonna add in 13 as well, and just click the arrows to move that up. So then they're gonna go 13, and then number four is the taper habitat. Um, we could probably rename them to make it much more uh, obvious. And in fact, that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. Okay, <laughs> we've now renamed all of them. So if we look at the tour manager, uh, we can see they've all been named. We start off, well, we don't have the, the tour start and the tour end, but we start off with the giant otters, then the wildlife area, then we go food and drink stop. We've got the tapers, the goliath frog, the lesser uh, and Antillian iguana. Then I think maybe actually we should have the toilet stop. Then we have axolotl, then the poison frog, then the golden poison frog. And I haven't actually given this a capital P, so I'm just going to rename that very quickly. There we go. Now it's got capital P. Okay, so the final thing we need to do is we need to set these. Um, clearly, they're not all set up correctly because this is not an animal. There's no animals in here. So we're just going to make this an intermission as well. Um, they can use some nearby stuff. This is more really just for us because we know that this is like a thing that they might have a look at. There might be some some local wildlife in here that they can have a look at. Um, some butterflies or something. I don't know. Whatever, whatever is around. And this one needs to be set to be an intermission as well because they need to uh, use the uh the facilities the the food and drink stuff we've got around and again here they can use the toilets so 
that should, uh, tool point is not accessible. If I play, does that fix this? Ah, there we go. It took a second, but yes, it's operational. Um, so the tour is working fine now. Have a look at the rating. I think that will probably go up in time now that we've improved it somewhat. And you can see where it starts. Ah, uh, we've got no one assigned to the tour, so that doesn't help. And no one at the and then this is where it ends. So I'm gonna go back to the start. Um, assigned to the tour. We need to have someone assigned. So I'm gonna go into our staff. Where are our educators? Because I thought we assigned someone to this. Um, we've got one here. I think they were the one on Zoo. So perhaps we need a new work zone just with this tour in it. And then that might that might work. Okay, so we've assigned the staff building um, and then we've got a couple of toilets, um, both the toilets, all the food and drinks and facilities around here and all the tour points. because I'm not quite sure what they're gonna need. And we're going to call this uh, work zone the European and Exhibits Tour. Because that is what the tour is. So one of our educators needs to be on the European because they're European animals and are exhibit animals. Hopefully that will fix this and enable them to actually get on the tour. Okay, so I've just reassigned loads of our work zones because I realized that a number of the uh, education points weren't actually included in the work zones we had. Uh, so like the animal talk points, which meant that our educators weren't educating guests on those animals, which is a massive shame. And you can see that because if you go to the education tab, you can click on animal talks and it tells you if none of them are assigned. Um, we've now got all of them assigned, including our animal talks here. And I think that hopefully this has been resolved by us having that educator um, working now on this tour. None assigned to the tour, but it does say that they're, it's open and they are ready. Oh, I'm gonna pause. Inspector's report is in. Good on, on cleanliness, not, good, not so good on education. Uh, that research is complete again. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. So the axolotls completed on their research. I think that means that we should put them to work on the goliath frogs. And let's go have a look at the axolotl because we probably have a bit of a revamp to do to the habitat. Yeah, so look, we can put some extra rock piles. I don't know where they actually come in. Oh, there. <laughs> um, probably on the other side. And some small ones there. And then we've got some logs we can put in, uh, which must be on the other side. I like the seeing where they come in. <laughs> There's another log there and the last log down there. Cool. So now they've got all of this stuff. They're at 100% happiness. They're loving their habitat, which is perfect. How many axolotls have we got at the minute? Wow, we've got four. Okay, cool. They're doing well then on the management of that. Um, quarantine's passed for our red lemurs. That's great. Not our red lemurs, our red pandas, which is absolutely amazing. Oh my goodness, we've just had a baby bear. <gasps> Peanuts just had offspring. Look at them. Oh, look at them. Oh, with their dad. Oh, that's adorable. Look at them. They're so cute and tiny. <gasps> Little teddy bears. They're like baby teddy bears. Oh, they're beautiful. Well, I think our tour situation is sorted out now. Um, we're going to have to check in on it perhaps later in the episode because it says that everything's working, but I can't see an educator assigned to it. And I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm probably just missing a tiny thing, but I can't think what it is right now. Um, but yeah, it's telling us, oh, we've had offspring. That's fine. They'll be put into, I think they should just be sold directly. Oh no, they are going into uh, exhibit storage. So let's just quick trade all of these animals out of quick, out of our exhibit trading. Um, and then let's put the barriers in for this habitat. Now we'll have to see whether they can escape from that. That is a very large barrier for them, but we like to give them more space than they need. And it gives them a cool, like, um, it's like a good elevation to it as well. So hopefully the guests will be able to see in quite well, um, especially because we can make this whole uh, side of the habitat one-way glass, which is gives really good visibility for the guests. 
um, into the habitat. Um, let's move them in and let's find out because that's the only way to tell whether they'll be able to escape or not. So select both of them. Let's move them and let's put them in habitat 46, which is going to be renamed to red pandas. Oh, I tour group. We just had one here. Uh, tour group will arrive soon. Does that mean that you've got uh, someone assigned to it? Oh, I'm not sure. Do the tour rating. It's still really bad. Perhaps means we don't have them there. Um, I will figure it out eventually, though. <laughs> and we finished our golden poison frog research. So I'm just going to move them on to the other poison frog. And they can get cracking on that. And we've still got Liz checking up on all the animals. So that's good. Ooh, pangolins are about to mate. Ooh, are they? Or are they just running to the, to the colourful ball? That's a, that's a different way of mating. But you know what? If it works, it works. Solar panel needs repair. Let's repair it and change the maintenance date. We've got so many solar panels in this in this zoo. This one looks like it needs... Oh, it's already set there. It's already needing of a mechanic. Uh, mechanics are already there for that one. So we've got a number of mechanics working and they're doing, they're doing a good job. So I think that's okay. Oh, we've got our red pandas arriving as well. Here they go. Oh, they're so little. Oh, look at them. Look at them go. Oh, look. At, oh, now they're together. Look at them walking around. Okay, that's a bit weird to watch. <laughs> uh, one thing we do need to do is we need to set their habitat to be uh, climb proof the whole way around. So I'm going to select the whole barrier and then go in settings and make it climb proof. And we probably, oh, we're going to have to change this because I forgot. Oh, going to undo that. Um, we want it to be climb proof on different sides. So let's select this whole edge. We want it to be climb proof on the left. No, on the right. And then this side, we're just going to continue this right the way around. Okay, so now we've got these, uh, the climb proof uh, metal bits facing inwards. So that's good. That means they shouldn't be able to escape. Let's just check whether they can though, by clicking habitat and selecting them. Yeah, they can't, which means that this area works because they can't climb up there, which is good. We're getting alerts because they're not in a work zone, which we know. So I'm going to pause the game, go on Asia entrance and add this in. This is probably the last habitat we'll have in this work zone because we've already got three others. Um, and we need to add it into the zoo work zone as well. So our mechanics and our vets can access it too. So if we select that there, we can do that. Now they should be happy. They've got a nice, quick and easy route as well to all of these. So it should be fairly efficient. I don't know how many keepers we have on this work zone. Um, we've got one at the minute on Asia entrance. So they've got quite a high workload. I'm just going to hire another keeper and set them to the same. We do need to do another um, renaming of them soon. Um, I'm not sure if this is... Have we got them in? Did I click them? Yes, they're already in there. Perhaps just didn't update quick enough. Uh, oh, or I didn't see it. No work zone. Okay. Uh, we need this on Asia entrance. And then they should be good. I think everyone else is happy. It was just the Asia entrance work zone that's a little bit um, a little bit overworked. And our tours. Okay. So the one doing the tour says I've got quite a lot to do. That's good. At least that means they're working. Um, which, which is something. Uh, but they're only quite low in level, so that could be why. So hopefully that'll be fine and we'll be able to get them sorted out. We've got one security guard with the work, low workload um, and then a number of vendors who have high. I think everyone's kind of okay at the minute. Oh, they've, of course they've got low welfare. Okay, I'm going to pause it because I imagine, is their temperature correct? Oh, the temperature's not too bad, but they, they don't have enough space, is that? Ah, they need more climbing space. Okay, I was going to say, I thought this habitat was massive. Okay, let's let's paint the terrain in and then make sure they're happy with that. And we'll do this one step at a time. Okay, so they're happy with that amount of, uh, of uh, the relevant bits of habitat. They're happy with the habitat painting, I should say. <laughs> um, it's the right type of uh, terrain. Now we need to give them a shelter. I think, again, because they're only so small, we could give them a little 
Um, in fact, actually, I think we should build them a little bit of a tree house because that will factor into their, um, their climbing space as well. So I think if we put one of these on as a base, just find a flatter area. I think around here is good. And let's put this in about here. Is that touching on the backs? No, it's not. Okay, so now we need to add some logs to this. They go right into the ground like that. There you go. That's what we wanted. Um, we've already got a bit of a, a, a thing there, a bit of a climbing area, and it's all the hard shelter they need. But I think we should add a little bit more and uh, spice this up a little bit. So as far as enrichment, let's put in the enrichment they need next because they need more than just climbing. They're going to want a forage box, ideally. And this terrain is a bit steep to have one unless we whack it over here somewhere. Ooh, we could put it here. Let's put it right there where it, where they're happy with it. Um, then, oh, and I haven't selected them, so maybe they don't want a forage box. <laughs> so we need to filter by the red panda. I thought I'd done that. Okay, they do want a forage box, so we're all good. And they want a dog ball as well. So let's put one dog ball, maybe not over there, actually. Maybe have it a bit closer to, uh, to where the guests are actually going to see it. Let's move it about here. And that should be good then we can also just get some normal feeding on this platform at the bottom. So let's go food and water. Let's have a four meter platform and let's just add it to the shelter um, about here. Put it on the front there. So the keepers can come in and fill it up there. And then water wise, I think we'll probably have a bit of a water area at the back here. I don't think there's any water pumps. Oh, there is a water pump nearby. So perhaps we should utilize this area down here for water. Um, if we can, maybe even have a little stream or something, though I think that might be quite difficult to to do. And I don't think that they swim. Um, I don't think, yeah, they don't have any requirement for swimming. So I'm inclined to give them a smaller water area because I don't want to give them stuff that they just don't need. Um, it seems a bit mean to give them a water area if they don't swim. <laughs> There we go. So it's a bit more in keeping with everything else. Um, our vet research is complete. That's great. Carry on with the frogs. I'm going to pause it. Oh no! Frisky Felipe has died. Oh. He's a, he's a legend in our zoo. Oh, he didn't, he didn't live for that long either. I have to say, 14 years. I kind of expect him to live longer. Maybe that's unreasonable. He's had some babies, so, so that's good. But we are going to need a new male. And I think we need to... I want to see how many otters we actually have in this habitat now. Oh, wow, we've got three baby boys. So that would be good. I'm going to pause the game because there's too much going on. Um, that would be good if we could keep these females. Maybe get another female even. Okay, so from these, we've got one male here, uh, Antonio, and three females. I think maybe we should get this... Maybe we should get all of them. What, what group size do they live in, actually? giant otter oh wow up to loads of females okay so maybe we should have a few more females actually we can get this female and this one and then this male and i think that's probably fine have five females as probably oh, maybe we should get the sixth let's get the sixth one why not we can't leave her behind okay <laughs> And then we're going to send all of these otters into our uh, quarantine. And hopefully we can have them back soon. Um, wow. Okay. That's a lot that's going to happen there. We had a number of uh, concerns over here. Oh, no. Okay. So we need to call the vet for this. We've got some diseased animals. Um, why is that? Okay. The vet's been called here. Did he say it was a habitat cleanliness risk? If we go habitat, let's go habitat cleanliness. Ah, uh, yeah, I think it, they need some more um, some more keepers over here. Seems like this is a bit of a risk. Yeah, the food's gone off, which is a bit of a risk because um, they need to clean up the food. Um, what section is this in? Let's have a look. So the work zones, I imagine it's in the Africa Middle. It is. Um, how are the staff doing who are assigned to Africa Middle? Africa Middle. You say you're happy, though. Um, and they've got two five-star keepers on there, so they should kind of be okay. 
I'm a bit surprised if they're not. We've got two on Africa entrance, uh, three on Africa entrance though, which we don't really need. Um, I think perhaps we've got two on Asia entrance. I think maybe we need to move one from Africa entrance to something else because we've got th three on that. And as I said, we don't need that many. It's only um, it's only a few habitats. It's it's just these three, I believe. Um, so yeah, we can we can definitely get them them moved off when we need to. I suppose this is quite this is a four habitat one, which is fairly large, but they should be able to manage it between two keepers. It, it's not that bigger, but bigger job. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but we can hopefully sort that out in a second. They say that they can't reach this. Perhaps like oh, I think it's probably when I took out the habitat gate, it probably took it out of the work zone. Yeah, Asia entrance. Yeah, there we go. That's so annoying when it does that. Okay. I think the work zones are linked to like the habitat doors um, as far as uh, like the barrier doors as far as habitats are concerned and it's taken the name off as well. So red panda, there we go. It's definitely better having the door here though because now we can we can make some modifications. And I'm just going to put in a little, um, a little uh, water area. There we go. I think that's pretty good. That's just a little area, isn't it? That's all they kind of need. And then we can just check that they're happy with the terrain again. There's quite a lot of soil, so I'm just going to, again, um, just paint some grass in. I should really do the uh, the water before I add any grass, uh, before I make sure that the habitat's like the right thing for them. Um, I think this is okay over here, though, as long as it's, you know, we can smooth that. that that's kind of smooth enough for them. As long as they're happy at the end of the day, it's absolutely fine. And they do seem to be happy. And I think the next thing that we should do for these guys is oh, make sure that all our limbs are okay. Ooh, zomb oh, I realized I spelled uh, Zombumafu wrong. I put an A instead of an O. So there you go. Okay, so let's make our red pandas some climbing stuff. Okay, I think that gives them a pretty good amount of uh, climbing there. It's a bit different as well, and it gives them a lot of hard shelter, um, which is great. So definitely fine for hard shelter. <laughs> um, oh my goodness, disease is now life-threatening. Didn't know you were ill. Oh goodness, okay, so they need to be treated urgently for that. Okay, well hopefully they'll get called quickly. Um, it's one of our wild water buffalo. Got a lot of vet needs, so I'm actually going to take our vet uh, research off right now. Just focus on. In fact, we'll get one of them to research the current illness, and then the other two can uh, 
check up on our guests. Oh, not guests. On well, they are our guests. On our animals and make sure that they're okay. Um, they're also our guests at our zoo, though. We need to make sure we're taking care of them. Now, they've got low welfare. Why is that? It's the temperature. Okay, I did wonder about this as well, which is, you know, a good reason why we've got them next to the Himalayan bears is that I believe uh, red panda need to live in pretty cold temperatures. They do. So 0 to 29 degrees. So it's only when it gets really hot, like it is currently, like the 37 degree range, that it becomes an issue. But I think we definitely need to add some coolers in um, to make sure that they're okay. So I'm just going to put uh, one in here and we're going to set it to be on a nice like 10 degrees because it's 0 to 20. In fact, it should probably be more like um, 18 degrees or 15. Let's put it to 18 degrees um, because they, they do live in warmer temperatures and we can just duplicate that across and put one up here and one over here and then maybe one at the back. And perhaps we should have a little bit of snow. I need to check on their requirements for snow. Um, but because I'm not sure if they do need any or if they want any. Oh, they are happy to have some snow. So maybe this one at the back, if I can just find where I put it, um, should have some snow on it. Okay, I've just deleted it because I don't know where I put it. Let's put one in on the back here though. Let's make this one be, um, let's have this one be zero degrees. And then we can sink that down a little bit too. And now when we paint in the habitat, um, we can have a little bit of snow just at the back here. You can kind of tie across there, can't it? And have some snow up here and put a cooler in up here. Because then it kind of ties together a bit better as well. Okay, so hopefully that will massively help their, their happiness because you can see the heat is going to come right down when these go operational. And they've currently got no power, so that'll, that'll be the next thing we need to do, which is why it's not coming down. Uh, we need all of these to be powered, so we need to put another solar panel in probably around here, which we can just link up, and then one around the back too odd because all of these are being serviced absolutely fine um okay that's interesting uh we could do with these so these boards aren't being powered and in fact i'm just going to delete them because they're not really necessary these display boards okay opal's being collected so these can all be dismissed because all the diseased animals are being looked after now. Um, so that is good. This is a bit weird, actually. Quarantine's passed for three of our otters. That's good. When the fourth one's done as well, we can actually get them out and get them into their habitats. How do... What do the red pandas think about nature? That's the main question. They like tiger and temperate uh, plants from Asia. So this is going to be a fun one.
Okay, so I think that's that's pretty. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> um, I just tried to use the same uh, the same trees as we had in the other one with a few additions, but it, it, the same as the Himalayans is a bit more like continuity over it. So we've got the Durian larch and the Scots pine uh, coming across, and I think if I can find a red panda somewhere, there they are. Um, I think they're happy with the amount of coverage. Yeah, they could even have more, but this looks like a good amount where guests can still see the animals. Um, but I do want them to have the ability to hide. So they've got this really prominent climbing platform so they can come right out and, and the guests can see them really well. And um, they've obviously got this feeding platform. They've, they've also got food that's further in. So they're going to have the kind of feeding platform in here, which is a bit harder to see. And they've got a dog ball uh, behind this tree there. And then they got some some climbing that's a bit more hidden. So if they want to hide, they have the ability to, which I think is really important for shy animals. So we're not forcing them to be right there with the guests. Uh, we do need to add a little bit of like the maintenance side of things. So we need some education boards, which I'm going to put in now, along with donation bins, normal bins and benches for this area. Okay, I think that's good. Added them in there. The next thing we should do is check up on our otters because all of these are able to be moved to the new habitat or the, the original habitat, I should say, I should say for this zoo. So I'm gonna put them to the giant otters habitat and let them be moved across if I hit play. Um, the next thing we need to do is I think we'll probably continue building out this area. I might put some a, a guest focus thing here. Um, and then have some more animals carry on after and we can kind of segregate the uh, the zoo zones that way um, We've got some more broken elements um, Six months. Okay, I'm gonna make anything that's broken on six months I'm gonna reduce down to three and just make sure it's getting the care that it needs um, To be honest, I think a lot of these probably just need to be set to every three months Got a notification that we've got some more babies as well. So let's trade them into the wild for a little bit more cash that's good. Love our exhibit babies. They, they, a healthy cash flow into our um, into our zoo. And think how many more we're breeding. It's a shame that we can't release them uh, directly uh, in the in in this uh, in the franchise zoos. You can't release exhibit animals directly into the wild, which is kind of a shame because that's the whole point of the zoo. But at least we're giving them to other zoos, and they'll be using them to breed and uh, and release. Now I think. We've got our new new male here, and I already know what I want to call this guy because we had some incredible suggestions for male uh, otters in keeping with the uh, the traditional uh, double name. I think we had we've had so many now. <laughs> the last one being Frisky Felipe. So the next one is going to be Sizable Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> which I just think is really funny. Um, so he's the next male otter. We've got a load of other otters in here as well. We may have to do a little bit of renaming of them, but we're not going to do that in this episode. I think we'll probably aim to do that in the next episode. But for now, we have a beautiful habitat for our red pandas and they are loving their climbing area. So... I think we'll leave it there for this one. If you have enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.